<laughs> in this video we are going to see how you can find a market for your game because you can't sell something if there is no market for it, if there is no demand for it. Uh, we are going to see how you can use some tools to assess if there is a trending at some point, if there is still demand for what you are doing, if there is some community around what you are trying to provide. But we are not going into too much details because there are a lot of things that would just come out of your head and that people may like it or not but at least you have to figure out a broader uh, general or a broader niche that you can just jump into and provide something that people will like because the thing is you are going to offer something that people like and something that people didn't know that they would find interesting so for instance we are making a platformer game there is a niche for platformer games but there isn't a niche, there aren't communities about king pigs or <laughs> pig revolutions or kingdoms of pigs or, <laughs> or anything like this. So this is our unique selling point. This is what we are offering that no one else is offering. But we need to engage into a established market because we need to see if there is actually people that are currently playing or currently demanding what we need to what we are going to offer so in this video we are going to see how you can find these people because you can have a great idea that only exists uh, in your mind that is only valuable that is only cool in your mind but if you don't reach out to people that actually think that this is also interesting you will be basically just selling your game just for yourself Doing market research is an excellent tool for game designers as well because this will help you shape the design of your game. Because with market research, we will understand who are your players and what they want. So, for instance, when I was making the concept for Kitchen Tales, a game that is currently on hold since 2018 because back then I didn't have the technical skills to make the game. Nowadays, I think that I have, but anyway, I will, <laughs> I will go back to this project anytime soon. Uh, when I was doing the conceptualization of this game, um, two things were major for the three things actually were major for deciding uh, that I was uh, I would like to make a cooking platformer game. Back then, Master Chef was a trending thing here in Brazil, and also an an app called iFood, which is basically a uh, food delivering app, was also trending here in Brazil as well. So I was like. Oh, I think that people would like to play something regarding food, right? And also, I like to cook as well. So this is something that I, I'm very passionate about. You can see from from my my sides here. But yeah, so I, I I figure out that yeah, I want to make a game about cooking. And when I went to Google Trends to figure out what are the trends regarding cooking and what are the topics that people find interesting regarding cooking, I figured out that Italy is a country where cooking is always trending, is always a trending topic there. And I thought about, hey, so I can use this in my favor, right? So I think that I will make the main protagonist a, an Italian cook. So it's an Italian cook pig, a cook pig. And his name is Bucerino, which is something that uh, resembles the, the Italian uh, the Italian language, so Bucerino. But this, the thing is, by doing market research, I figure out some core, some unique selling points that I can use to sell my game, especially for Italian uh, people, Italian players. The first thing that you are likely to do before you do your market research is to establish your demographics, so the genre, the age, the region, the consumption habits of your audience. This will help you speak to, reach out to, and attract the right people for the, the product that you are creating. So, for instance, if you are creating a platformer game and you go into a first-person shooter community, they will be way less likely to be receptive to your product than if you post it on a platformer game community. The, the way that you create relationship with people is to through conversation, right? So, through knowing them and know and let them know you. So, for instance, you can reach out. In our case, we can reach out to some politics communities and ask them, "Hey, does it make sense for a game to to have a history about a re rebellion, so a population rebelling against the king? Is this history accurate or not?" And they can say, "Hey, man, this is not actually history accurate." Or they can say, "Hey, this is very much history accurate." So they can provide more information, more insights into your game concept. And by doing this, 
you will help them like your game because they will be engaged into uh, what you are creating. You are creating some report, some relationship with these people by letting them know what you are offering and letting them know that you know what they want. So you are creating a really good and healthy relationship with your audience. And by creating the, the demographics and starting to reach out to the proper audience, allowing them to be attracted to your product or to reach out to, to them and provide something that they will be receptive, you are going to create a healthy relationship. And well, since I know that you are way more into practical knowledge than into abstract knowledge, let me present you some tools that you can use to do your market research. So we starting with SteamDB. SteamDB will help you assess the data, the relevant data of games that you can use as reference. For instance, I like to, to search for sales to see the pricing of the games that we want to, to, to use as reference. So we have some games on historical low, so probably they are not selling that well previously. Uh, release date August 2022 so maybe they are trying to get some sales I would like to know if this game that is currently on sales have a good history so yeah they are they're likely making some sales well let's see if we can see some charts regarding the players so let's try to know the user 45 players currently playing, not very much. Uh, what's the peak? All time peak five days ago. Uh, 160 players, 5,000 uh, followers. Mm. So something that I I also like about this this tool, the SteamDB, is the calendar tool because this will help us plan the release date for our game. So let's say we want to launch our game on November this year. What are we going to compete with? These ones are actually competitors because people will have to decide at this month if they spend money on our game or into these other games. So we have a matching matchmaking, which is basically probably a relationship, a visual novel no actually uh yeah this one is more into romance and management so it's not our audience so we are not competing with this kind of game um and blast to oh to the platform right away so this is a competitor people will have to decide if they buy our game or this one and to be very honest this one seems to be very cool so i don't want to compete with this uh we also have other games here so for instance, Tower, Tower Factory, which is a city build, a tower, tower defense, and probably a city builder game. These kind of games are into a trend, so I don't like to compete with this as well, because people are way more likely to buy this game than to buy a 2D platformer. So let's see on January uh, next year, you, you can see that there are not major releases planned for this uh, month. Uh, we have this one, Prison Life Simulator, Action Adventure, it's a simulator game, so it's not a, a 2D platformer. And also this one, which is a strategy, strategy city builder, so we are not going to compete with this one as well. So it seems like January next year is going to be a better date for releasing our game, especially if we can find some events on so, some sales to help us with this release. And the next thing that I want to, to use here is the charts because this will help us figure out the numbers regarding the, the games that we want to, to, comp to choose as reference, right? So let's say a platformer, 2D platformers. Um, currently there are 51,000 people playing this. I don't think that this is a 2D platformer, this is a 2D fighter. Uh, but let's see, Brawlhalla is also a 2D fighter game, 2D fighting game. So Celeste, Celeste is definitely one that is a 2D platformer. There are currently a thousand people playing Celeste, uh, which uh, out of this we had a peak in the last uh, liters, uh, 24 hours of a thousand uh, five hundred people playing this game, and all time peak of. Uh, the uh, 4,000 people playing this game. Let's see more about this game. So let's search for that. 
uh, three years, we have, yeah, it's more likely that we, we can reach something like 300 uh, players uh, consecutively playing our game. So this is a, a number that we should keep in mind for our audience and for our sales. Well, the next one is, of course, Google Trends. This will help you figure out if your kind of uh, niche is actually trending or to figure out a niche that you can explore to, uh, for your game. So let's explore and we are going to search worldwide in the past, let's look for the past five years because this, this will help us see if there is a seasonal trend or if it's actually something that is just happening. And we are going to search for only games, games. So let's see, uh, platformer game, platformer, platform game. And let's also s compare this to, for instance, a city builder. Yeah, you can see that, well, previously on 2020, which was the, the year of the, the lockdowns, right? So probably this will actually trend. And well, platformer games are very consistent, so it's kind of safe to release them. There is always market for them, but they are currently on a low, so they are going into a dip. And well, yeah, we can see that there are some trends here, for instance, on China. Yeah, on China, platformer games are trending. Interest by region. Okay, so let's add something uh, another. So it's pretty much safe to create a platform again, right? Uh, in comparison to a city builder. So let's see revolution, which is a topic uh, that we are going to talk about in our game as well. So you can see that there, there seems to be some seasonal things here. I don't know if this is a annual Thing or maybe an anniversary of any given revolution. So let's see. Yeah, there are many. Uh, I think that there are, these are Japanese things, <laughs> Japanese terms. Um, yeah, I, I think that. Well, you can see that there is a increase in. They are currently trending. So I think that if we are going to release this, is better that we release it quickly because otherwise we are going to go into one of those plateaus or into one of the dips but we are currently going into one of the the heights so it's currently trending so we can take advantage of that because we are going to make a game about a revolution against a king but well this is how you can use the google trends to get in uh, to get some knowledge about if the game is currently trending or to plan yourself for some date that will likely to give you a leverage for the release of your game. So the final tool that I want to present to you is each.io insights. This will well give you insights specifically about each.io market. Uh, the interface changed so I actually preferred when it was uh, made into these pie charts but well there, are no, there is no way that we can use this using web or natively on PC. So I'm going to add a footage of my phone as I navigate this so that you can follow up with me. So the first thing that you can see is that we have our own creations. So if you want to know some insights about your creations, you can click on one of them. But let's look for other creations here on the platform. And let's look for games and raw distributions well category games most of the games are already released but there's yeah a huge percentage of them that are currently on development in development and well interesting so most of these games are made in html which is surprising i thought that most of them would be made for windows and this already makes me made me think makes me think that most of these games are not commercial releases, so they are most likely to be prototypes or things like this. Because I don't think that most people would pay to play a game to get a game that they can play on the web browser. Well, made with our tools, so generous. 
action platform well we have many unspecified games but then we have action and platformer which is good there are many platformer games being released on itch.io which gives me a signal that there are many people creating this game which gives me a signal that maybe there are many play uh, many people playing this game as well and well the other um the other categories are not very relevant let's see the binary distributions so yeah a huge huge a massively a massive uh, percentage of these games are free um yeah most of them are not free are paid but out of these games that we saw most of them are free which makes me think that each drive is not the the not the best way to release the game review okay and let's see the leaderboards so the creators we have these people generous this is what interests us so action platform and adventure yeah of course and then puzzle shooter simulator interesting i thought that rpgs will be more on the top but yeah they are way on the bottom uh, languages oh this is uh, another interesting thing to, to note so english well of course and then french spanish and well if i want to create a brazilian portuguese um game yeah it's brazilian portuguese it's not portuguese from brazil <laughs> you from portugal is speaking brazilian <laughs> not not portuguese so if i want to create a brazilian portuguese game i will most likely not have a good performance that's it these are some tools tips and tricks that you can use to do your market research again by doing your market research you are going to take informed decisions and safer steps towards the release the release of your game and you will increase your chances of making a successful product because this will help you understand your audience and see how big or how small your audience is and plan your budget and also plan how much time you are going to spend on this project and the quality of the project that you want to provide to your audience but this is something that you are going to uh, talk about in the next video but for this one that's it thank you so much for watching go to the first line to first dollar uh, course page and pre-order your course because there we are going to talk way more into details about these topics and help you earn your first dollars with your games but that's it thank you so much for watching keep developing and to the next one see you there